The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Tonight, while you're listening to this program, your telephone may ring. Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on? Why, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? It's This is Your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Uh, sure I do. It's my good friends, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Just last Wednesday, my Equitable representative told me about a special life insurance plan for men on the way up. Believe me, that's a great idea. So naturally, I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in 15 minutes, I'll give you full information about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight's FBI file, The Henpecked Thief. Crime as a business is in the midst of a great boom at the moment, with more than 5,000 major crimes being committed in the United States every day. But do not labor under the delusion that those are 5,000 successful crimes. The prison population of the country is larger today than it has ever been, and it continues to grow. Even those engaged in a life of crime who have not yet been caught do not live the life of ease that popular fiction would have you believe. For the criminal, in choosing his career of crime, has automatically sacrificed many of the comforts which you law-abiding citizens take for granted. Night file opens in a small apartment located in the residential section of San Francisco. One of the occupants of the flat, Phyllis West, is just answering the front door. Hello, Phyllis. Oh, hello, Mom. Come on in. Thanks. I was doing some shopping in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop by and see you. Gee, I'm glad you did. Where's that husband of yours? Wait. Well, he's here. Where? It's in the bedroom. Still sleeping? Well, yes. Phyllis. Do you know what time it is? Well, it's 2 not... o'clock in the afternoon, and he's still pounding the pillow. Well, he, he didn't get home until very late. Was he working? No. Any sign of him getting a job? He told me he'd got some things lined up. Oh, he's been handing you that for a month. Phyllis, I'm going to have a talk with him. After all, you're my daughter, and I won't hey, stand... Phyllis, by... have you seen my... Uh... Oh, hello, Mrs. Bartow. Good morning. Phyllis, have you seen that new striped tie? Oh, yes, it's in the hall closet. I'll get it. Just a minute. Let him get it himself. Huh? She's not doing any more waiting on you. What is it? Sit down. What's Sit it? down, I said. Okay. Now, I want to have a talk with you. Please, Mother. You keep out of this. Young man, when my daughter married you, it was against my better judgment. But I agreed to the match because she believed you had a very bright future. Well, you've been married three years now, and what's happened? Well, I've been doing things, Mrs. Bartow. You've barely made enough to live on. Well, I just haven't got the brain. Oh, stop. Sixteen-year-old kids are stealing better than you are. No, that ain't so. Look at the papers. Every day they say crime waves are getting bigger and bigger. That's just publicity. Well, whatever it is, you're not cashing in on it. Oh, lay off, will you? Why, when my husband was alive, he stole better in depression years than you could with a boom on. All right, I've heard enough of this. Hal, where are you going? I'm getting out of here. I haven't finished with you, young man. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> Bartender. Hey, bartender. Hello, Al. 
Well, huh? Oh, hello, Duke. Sit down. Thanks. Hey, where's that bartender? He's busy, loading in some ice. I need some whiskey, Duke. You seem to be doing okay now, Al. Oh, I'm just getting started, boy. What are you celebrating? This ain't a celebration. It's a wake. What's wrong? Everything. <laughs> Can't be that bad. Duke, I, I've just been thinking about something. Want to hear it? Sure, why not? Years ago, way, way back when I was a kid, I lived with my uncle. That's on account of my mother and father were dead. Uh-huh. Well, my uncle was a nice enough guy, strictly a nine-to-five character, you know, legit. Yeah. I guess I'd still be with him if it wasn't for one thing. What's that? He had a stupid wife and a mean mother-in-law. I figured, well, there you are. That's what happens to legits. So I ran away and became a thief. I see. Figured I'd, I'd get action, you know, high living, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been a thief for over ten years, and what have I got to show for it, huh? Stupid wife, mean mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> you do need a drink. <laughs> That's why I'll buy you one as soon as the bartender gets back. Look, Duke. Duke, do you happen to know my mother-in-law? Oh, yes. What a nagger. I remember her when her husband was alive. She is a forceful woman. All the time she's at me to do something big. Gotta have to, me to be a star or something. See, I, I, I make out all right, Duke. I crack as good a safe as any guy in the business. <laughs> Just haven't got the brakes, that's all. Well, I'm glad I ran into you. Why? You may be just the man I'm looking for. What do you mean? I've got a job lined up. It's a real big job. One that would actually make your mother-in-law proud of you. No kidding, Duke. Mm-hmm. What's the setup? Now, well, let's get a drink at the bar. Then we'll go someplace private and talk. Two days later, at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Taylor is just completing the phone conversation. Well, Sheriff, I guess I have all the details now. Yes, I'll be up there in half an hour. Right. Bye. Morning, Jim. Oh, morning, Elliot. If you're not busy, we could go over that Wilton file. Well, not right now, Elliot. I've got to run upstate. What for? Well, Sheriff up in Canton just called. They had a bank robbery up there last night. Really? What's the story? The thieves gained entry through a skylight on the roof. Uh-huh. They cut the alarm wires, then blew the vault. How much did they get? Let's see, um, eighteen thousand six hundred and forty dollars. Whoa! Any leads, Jim? Well, sheriff said there were a few clues, but the bandits themselves made a clean getaway. Oh, I'm going up there now. Uh, can I do anything for you here at this end? Nothing that I know of now. I'll be in touch with you later. Just a minute. Oh, hello, Mom. Gee, I'm glad you're here. As soon as I got your message, I ran right over. Well, what's wrong? It's Al. Well? I'm worried about him. What did he do now? He didn't come home all night. Oh, is that all? Mother, he's never done this before. I hope he makes it a habit permanently. Mother, you shouldn't say those things. I love Al. I know. Have you tried to locate him? How? Call saloons, pool rooms, bookmakers. Oh, he wouldn't be at any of those places. How do you know? He wasn't when he called. When did he call? Last night, about midnight. Said he was going to do a real big job. One that we'd both be very proud of. That eliminates pool rooms and bookmakers. Huh? Just call the saloons. He must be drinking. Oh, he was very serious. Look, I've heard his routines before. This time, he's not getting away with it. I'm waiting here until he gets home. Jim. Oh, hello, Elliot. When would you get back? Just a few minutes ago. How'd you make out up there? Well, I didn't come up with anything definite on the identity of the bank robbers, but I did get a couple of fairly good leads. What are they? It appears that two men did the job. How'd you arrive at that? Well, as you know, the bank was entered through a skylight on the roof. Yes? They used a ladder to get onto the roof. It was still propped against the rear wall of the bank. Oh? The ground was pretty soggy back there, and at the base of the ladder, there were two distinct sets of footprints. Did you take an impression of them? Yes, cast it there on my desk. Oh, yes. I also measured the strides. The laboratory should be able to give us the approximate weight and height of the men. What else did you get? Well, apparently only one of the men climbed the ladder. 
There was only one set of muddy footprints on the roof. The other man acted as a lookout? Evidently. This first man broke the skylight glass to gain entry. Oh, I found this piece of material. It could have been torn from his coat. It was caught on the broken glass. Any fingerprints, Jim? Yes, I picked up several distinct prints in the skylight. They're in that envelope there. What'd you get inside the bank? Well, the cracksman muffled the safe before he blew it open, but that won't do much help to us. Why not? He used army blankets, and they're on sale now to the general public, so they'd be pretty difficult to trace. Well, Jim, it looks as if you've got everything but the bandits themselves. I'm hoping the laboratory will fill that in for us. Phyllis, what? will you stop that crying? I, I can't help it. Look, nothing's happened to him. He'll be home. No, he won't, Mommy. I'm sure of it now. Al's left Oh, me. don't be ridiculous. I know he has. He just got fed up with you picking on him the way you do. Now, just a minute, Phyllis. You've been very I'm mean a... to him, Mommy. He's a very sensitive fellow. Look, for the last time, I'm sorry. Al, to... is that you? Yeah, honey. There, you see? What did I tell you? Oh, Al, I'm, I'm so glad to see you. Well, what's the matter, baby? I've been worried to death about you. Now, look, I told you I was going out on a job. Now, let's have the real story. What do you mean? Where you've really been. I took a bank last night. <sighs> you what? Done a bank job, knocked off 18000 Oh, I don't believe it. No? Take a look. This morning's paper right here, front page. How many things? Baby, right here, you see? What? Daring upstate bank robbery. Uh -huh. Let me look. First National Bank of Canton was robbed last night of over $18,000. Daring bandits gain entry through Skylight. Daring hey, bandits, that's oh, it. Right. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, <clears throat> what have you got to say, Mrs. Bartow? I'm stunned. That should sort of make you change your mind about me now, huh? <laughs> Of course, doesn't it, Mommy? Well, I... Uh, you were all the time at me to do something big. Is that big enough for you? Yes, I guess it is. Okay. Uh, Baby, I'm hungry. Oh, you must be. Well, how about fixing me some food? I'd like a little attention around here. Mrs. Bartow. Yes, uh, Get out in the kitchen. Give your daughter a hand. Oh, uh, yes, of course I... Hey, wait a minute. Well? You say you got $18,000 for the job. That's right. Where is it? I'm getting it tomorrow. Your what? Well, the guy I'd done the job with took it back to his hotel. See, some of it was in securities. He's taken them to a fence. I don't believe it. I'll call his hotel and prove it. Hello? Did you get me the Central Hotel? Who is this guy you done the job with? Uh, Duke Shelton. Duke Shelton? Yeah, that's right. Duke Shelton. Oh, you stupid... You let him take all the money? Yeah, why? He's the biggest double-crosser in the business. Oh, you're crazy. Duke, Duke Shelton is off. Uh, Hello. All the people. Hello, Mr. Shelton. Shelton. Mother, how do you know about this, Mr. Shelton? He pulled the same deal on your father years ago. Hello? Huh? Are you sure? Al, oh, what is it? You checked out. <laughs> Tonight's FBI file will be reopened in just a moment. Now, a special message to men and women who are on the way up. The people who are going to open their doors to good news like this, too. Hey, Mary, I got a raise, a big one. We're going places. If you're that kind of person, bound and determined to get ahead, then be sure to investigate the Equitable Society's special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. A plan for people of all ages who expect to be earning more money three years from now. You mean that the Equitable Society takes my chances of future success into consideration? It certainly does. The Equitable Society's plan for men on the way up has these three advantages. First, it gives you and your family needed protection right now. Second, this Equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money... You can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. Third, this equitable plan is flexible at all times, can expand or contract as you see fit. That sounds like a smart plan to me. Where do I find out about it? There's nothing easier. Ask your Equitable Society representative for full information on the equitable plan for men and women on the way up. 
Phone him as soon as possible or send a postcard care of his station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Henpecked Thief. There are many widespread misconceptions about the criminal population of the country. A population numbering close to six million people. Some of those misconceptions are that all criminals are stupid people who have had no educational advantages. Another is that there is a criminal type who can be recognized and is distinguishable from the honest law-abiding citizen. And perhaps the most widespread incorrect notion is that they are loyal to each other. The bromide words it, there is honor among thieves. As can be seen from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, nothing could be further from the truth. No criminal has any loyalty to another criminal for one basic reason. His mind is incapable of understanding the rudiments of loyalty. Above the mythical coat of arms of every criminal is a motto which reads, It's every man for himself. Tonight's file continues at the San Francisco field office of the FBI. Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk. Say, Jim, hmm? any report from the laboratory on that bank robbery? Yes, I should say there is. What'd you get? Well, first of all, one of the bandits has been identified. His name is Al West. Did they get that from the fingerprints? That's right. What's his record? Two arrests for safe cracking. Oh, they were local jobs. Didn't come under our jurisdiction. Any idea where to find him? Well, police headquarters gave me an address on him. I checked and found he'd lived there until a year ago, but he moved, and that's where the trail ends. I see. We've got a tracer out on him now, though. What about the second man? Well, the only identification we have on him is the one that the laboratory reconstructed. How? Well, judging by the depth of his footprint, the length of his stride, he was a big man. Six feet one or two, weight over 250 pounds. Uh, that doesn't suggest anyone I know of offhand. Oh, we're checking on it. Oh, excuse me. Special Agent Taylor. Oh, yes, Sergeant. You did? Oh, will you let me have it, please? 920 Oak Street. Got it. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. Bye. Well, that's a break. What, Jim? That was Sergeant Myers at police headquarters. He picked up Al West on suspicion about a month ago. He was living then at 920 Oak Street. I'd better get right over there. Al? What? Want me to fix you some coffee? No. A sandwich, maybe? I don't want nothing. I wish you wouldn't act this way. Oh, baby, I feel awful. I figured at last I, I'd done something big. Something even your mother would be proud of. Oh, she's really got me nailed now. She understands. I'm sure she does. Well, then why didn't she let me go over to Duke Shelton's hotel? Why did she have to go? She's handled these things before, Al. She knows better what to do. Well, I could find out where he's gone as good as she could. Well, maybe. Look, are you rooting against me, too? Oh, of course not. Well, then why do you have... Oh, is that you, Mom? Yes. How'd you make out? Well, I had to spread a little dough around, but I finally got a line on where Shelton's gone. Who from? Guy at the transportation desk. I slipped him 20 bucks, and he told me that Duke had bought a plane ticket to Los Angeles. Oh, that's a break. Los Angeles, that's a big place. That don't tell us much. If we could find out one thing, it could tell us plenty. What's that? Is there a racetrack open down there? Yeah, sure. That's all we need to know. Why? I know Duke Shelton. Every time he's ever made a score, he's fed it right back to the horses. Well, I don't say he'll do it this time. Young man, once a horse player, always a horse player. We're flying to Los Angeles. Oak Street Apartments. What number are you calling? Oh, you got the wrong number. Oh, excuse me. Yes? 
I'm looking for Mr. L. West. He's not in. When is he expected back? Mm, not for some time. He went out of town. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Hmm? Here are my credentials. Oh, I see. Now, do you know where Al West is going? Well, no, sir. He left about two hours ago. His wife and his mother-in-law were with him. Mm-hmm. They said they were going out of town indefinitely. I wonder if I could see their apartment. I have a warrant here. Oh, sure thing. Excuse me. Let me get this call first. Certainly. Oak Street Apartments. All right, just a minute. This is a call for Mrs. Bartow. Mm-hmm. She's West's mother-in-law. Oh, we'll find out who it is. Yeah. Uh, who's calling, please? I see. Uh, hold it. The transportation desk at the Central Hotel. Let me talk to them, will you? Okay. Wait a second. Here. Thanks. Hello? Well, she's not in. May I take the message? Yes. What's your name, please? I see. I'm a special agent of the FBI. I wonder if you'd wait at the hotel for me. I want to get all the details. Elliot, over here. Oh, fine. Hop in. Right. Now, what's this all about? Well, I'll try to give you the complete story on it. I went over to West's apartment. He'd left town with his wife and mother-in-law. I see. While I was there, a call came in from the transportation man at the Central Hotel. He had a message for Mrs. Bartow. That's the mother-in-law. Uh-huh. It was intriguing enough for me to go over to the hotel and question him. What'd you get? Well, the mother-in-law had been over there earlier. She'd given him money to learn where one of the guests at the hotel had gone. Who was the guest? A man named Shelton. From his description, I'm certain that it was an old-time thief called Duke Shelton. Yeah, I've heard of him. And he's a big man. About six feet two, weighs around 250 pounds. The other bank robber? Appears that way. It also appears there's been a double cross of some kind. How's that? Well, the woman was pretty mad about Shelton checking out. Said she had to find him. Where had he gone? To Los Angeles. How come the transportation man called her back? Oh, he'd gotten some additional information that Shelton was going to stay at the El Cerrito Hotel in Los Angeles. Where are you going now? Back to the office to pick up Shelton's record. Then we're flying down there. Phyllis! Phyllis, I'm over here. Of Duke Shelton? No, did you? No. You know what he looks like, don't you? Yeah, a, a big, tall, fat man, kind of old. That's it. Where's Al? I don't know. I thought he. Oh, there he is, over there. Where? Right there, talking to that fellow in the check coat. A tout. Huh? He's talking to a tout, and he's still got my change from the plane tickets. Let's get over there quick. No, Mom, don't go picking We're on him. We're here to find Shelton, not to play horses. Hey, Al. Uh, yes, Mrs. Barton. Come here. What's the matter? Did you find him? No. Who were you talking to? A nice guy. Do you know him? No, but he's got something real good in the next race. Oh, you're not only stupid, you're a square. Young man, you stay with me. How'd you make out, Jim? I just spoke to the desk clerk. Yes? He said that Shelton came here to the El Cerrito about 1 o'clock, but he didn't like the room they showed him, so he decided not to check in. What about West? Did he show up? No, no, but I didn't expect he would. All he and his family knew about Shelton was that he had come to Los Angeles. They didn't get the information that he was on his way to this hotel. Did the clerk have any idea where Shelton went? Yes, he hired a car to go to the racetrack. Let's see, it's after 4 o'clock now. Mm-hmm. We could just about make it before the last race. Yes. Yeah. It'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack, but let's go. Elliot. Hmm? Elliot, I just went to the $100 ticket seller and showed him Duke Shelton's picture. Did he recognize him? Yes, he's been betting with him all day. How about this race? He bet uh, number seven. That's a horse called Best Girl. Just about post time. Yeah, I know. This is the last race. Won't have much chance to look for him. The only break we can get is if Best Girl wins and Shelton goes back to the payoff window. They're off! Come on, Best Girl. Coming in to stretch, 
is best girl on top by two. Right block to second by one. With take the line and toss and second neck for third. Then we come to Windy Hill. Two lengths behind Happy Dance and the last horse in London Town. Oh, some racer. Huh? I'm not interested. Oh, come on, Timberline. Hey, what are you rooting for? Get up there, Timberline. Did you bet on come him? Come on, Timberline. 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 Oh, how do you like that? Best girl winners. I asked you, did you bet on that Timberline? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to murder that bum in the check coat. That was my money. Oh, shut up. What? You I, I mean... Mother, I think I found huh? him. Huh? That man over there going into the stands. Is that him? Yeah. You sure? That's Shelton. Come on. Oh, I got to hand it to you, Mrs. Bartow. You had the right idea. I knew he'd come here. Hey, look. Look, he's going to the $100 cashier window. He's had a winner. He must still have the dough. Yeah. Let's nail him right now. Okay. Oh. Hello there, Duke. Huh? Duke, you remember my mother-in-law. What are you doing here? I've come to collect. I've come to collect too, Shelton. Huh? Who are you? A special agent of the FBI. Mother. We're getting out of here. Here we are, all of you. Hey, what is this? Well, finding you here too, West, I'd say we've hit the daily double. Duke Shelton received a 15-year sentence and Al West five years for their robbery of the Canton Bank. Thus, your FBI was able to close another file and write the word convicted upon the face of it. The fact that these criminals were caught is not the important thing to you unless you happen to own a bank. But the thing that is important to you is the manner in which they were caught the manner in which your FBI pursued to the logical conclusion every clue until they came to the telephone message from the porter at the hotel. For it is that devotion to detail that makes your FBI the organization it is, the organization that acts to protect you, the American people, against the army of six million criminals. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. If you're what President Thomas I. Parkinson of the Equitable Society describes as a man with faith in his own future and the future of America, then you'll surely want to learn more about the Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. Exactly how much will this plan cost me? The equitable man has the answer. How much protection does it give me right now? Your equitable representative can work that out in two minutes. Does this plan offer me desirable options? You bet it does. Your equitable man will be glad to give you further facts and figures on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Find him in the phone book under Equitable Society or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the used baby racket. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the used baby racket on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>